officially good morning, aloha from Hawaii. Uh, my name is Jürgen Steinmetz from Etobo News, and uh, with us we have uh, um, some amazing people from New York and from Cameroon. We have uh, Francois. We reported about Francois um, a number of times. She is the endless tourist. Um, we started reporting when she got stuck in Frankfurt. We actually started a lot earlier when Francois and I were, were supposed to meet at the ITB trade show in Berlin, be beginning of March. And uh, she went to New York because there was no ITB trade show. Then she tried to get back and she was not allowed to enter Germany, had to go back to the US. And then I think a whole different um, episode of her life started thanks to an amazing group of people um, here. Um, these are uh, tour guides and they can tell you a little bit more about themselves anyway. But Francois, you're going home finally. What happened? Repeat that. He's asking you what happened. You're finally on your way home. What yes, I'm, I'm, I'm finally, finally, I am on my way home. Um, the embassy booked the charter flight. The embassy booked the charter flight for us. They called me yesterday, uh, two days ago. They sent me a message to say finally I can get back home. But they told her on Friday that the flight was on Saturday from Dallas, and then they called and said the flight's on Sunday from Newark in New Jersey. Okay, so, so you guys had to drive from Washington to Newark? Yes. Wow. <laughs> How long does it take to drive there? Well, okay, David not, did really good. About three hours, about three hours 20 minutes. I, I get the highways are empty, especially at Sunday. Yes. <laughs> no and the driving. toll gates. You can drive right through. Wow. So uh, times times are changing, and now you're in Newark. I think you must be all excited, Francois, to, to go home. I am finally. so happy that Francoise is leaving the United States on Mother's Day, and it's also <laughs> Mother's Day in Cameroon. So it's the best Mother's Day present ever. Wonderful, wonderful. So from, from here, from Newark, New Jersey, you'll be taking Ethiopian Airlines on a nonstop flight to Addis Ababa. Mm -hmm. And in Addis, um, you'll be staying in a hotel or you're going to be stuck again at an airport? Will you be in a hotel in Addis Ababa? I don't know. I don't know. I don't okay. know. If everything is uncertain now, I cannot say. Okay, if you, have a, if you have a choice, I've been to Addis Ababa a few times. And I, I love the Sheraton Hotel. Well, it's actually part I don't of think the there's a choice. Okay, there won't be a choice. There's a no choice a anywhere in the world. <laughs> if you do have a choice, enjoy it. So I, I guess the piano player wouldn't be there in, in Corona times, but it's a wonderful hotel. I remember that. And um, people from Ethiopian Airlines are great. Um, I remember when I went to Addis Ababa last time on a Saturday, they all came out and showed me their security facilities and uh, their operations. So you're going to have, um, you're going to be well taken care of when you go to Addis Ababa. And then how long does it take from Addis Ababa to go home to uh, How far flight time from Addis Ababa to Cameroon? Uh, five hours. Okay. Okay. And five now, now let, let's go back to your host here and uh, Maybe you, you guys can explain can a little bit. How did, how did you get to, to know each other? How are you related and connected? And, um, and now it looks like you're good friends. Uh, how, how did it all, um, how did it all uh, come together? I saw the interview that you did with Francoise and it immediately spoke to my heart. And I contacted, uh, Maricar Donato and asked her if she had visited Francoise and she had not. And I thought for sure she needed food. So I called the hotel and they connected me with Francoise. And I said, what can I bring you? And the first thing she asked for was water. All she wanted was water. So um, I ran around my home and grabbed everything that I could think a person would need. If they're going to be stranded in a hotel room, I brought her t-shirts and sweats and pants. Uh, and uh, groceries, there were two bags of groceries, lots of water, mango juice, honey, tea, slippers, socks. It filled two large bags. And, um, and then I took her to a local landmark restaurant that was still open, Ben's Chili Bowl. And so we got food there. She loved their spicy chili. 
<laughs> and we went to the African American Civil War Museum and ate it out front and just talked with one another. And, uh, and then in three days, she was gone from the hotel. And I emailed her and asked her, where was she? And she said she was in the Maryland suburbs, but had no idea really where she was. And fortunately, a woman from Cameroon um, agreed to rent her basement room. And that was on a Friday. And I said, well, I want to come and see it for myself on Saturday and make sure that it's warm and that it's clean and it's safe. And it was. The woman, Simone, was wonderful. And, uh, you know, it started from there. I sent out emails to um, guides that I knew and asked for donations uh, to help her buy groceries and pay for the rent in the room. And um, so there's been about a dozen guides who have donated to help her pay her expenses while she's here. Some guides like David, David point the camera on you. Um, David took her sightseeing. Yeah, we went, uh, knowing that she's the vice president of, uh, the, the vice president of the African- Baseball, baseball and softball. The baseball, African baseball and federa softball federation. I took her to the, uh, youth training facility in Southeast DC to show them how the local baseball team is involved in the community. And she suggested that perhaps then like she could connect with major league baseball and make more connections in Africa. So more African youths get involved in baseball. Then we went to the major league stadium, which of course is closed, but you can see inside from the outside. And that was a nice day. We had some ice cream and I ate the whole pint. I don't know. <laughs> We both like coffee ice cream, I found out. That's our favorite flavor. And then on uh, Thursday, I picked her up, and her daughter is 18, thinking about college. So we uh, walked around Georgetown University and learned a little bit about its history, took a lot of photos. Then we drove up to Howard University and took some photos there and stopped at Catholic University and walked around the, uh, the big church there. It's the uh, Basilica of the National Shrine. It's one of the biggest churches in the world. And I, I found out about her. Myra Carr saw you, Jurgensen, and I'm just a recently graduated student of Myra Carr's classes. I haven't worked as a guide yet, although I am licensed as a guide now, and I'm a member of the guild. But she asked me to call her, and then I, that's how I found out about her through Myra Carr. This okay. is tourism. This is tourism beside COVID. COVID-19. <laughs> And I was able to um, arrange an interview on one of our local TV stations because they had interviewed me a couple weeks ago. So I saw she's that. been on I our local that. TV that station as well. And um, it's just, um, I'm so happy for her. I really, really thought we were trying to find ways to get her into France and the embassy said, absolutely not. I've got friends who have friends who are flight attendants with Air France. We were reaching out to them and um, it was looking pretty pretty depressing and uh so to hear from her yesterday that she was going to be able to go home today was the best mother's day gift ever 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 no that's that, that's wonderful and we i think um, the, our first interview and really the lady who put this all initially together is joining us i think you're about to, you're in washington right yes um, so, so, so tell me from your end, how, how did this all start? Because you, you were kind of essential to have put this all together in the first place. Yeah, I, it started because of uh, Daniel uh, from Yaounde, uh, one of the area representatives from the World Federation of Jewish Light and Federation, uh, had put an announcement that uh, she was uh, in the United States. And I was not sure exactly where until I found out that she was already in Washington since April 4. And that's how it all began, because of how guides work together in solidarity all around the world. Uh, and, and I think it's so beautiful, this story. And thank you for breaking the news and closing the news right now. Uh, in 40 days, we were able to because of my, you know, my, my friends, uh, they were able to help Francoise in all her, in all her ordeal and all her problems and help her until she's able to go home. So that's a real story to tell. 
And, and, and you're, you're, tell me a little bit about, more about your organization. Uh, you said it's a global organization and you're involved in the part in Washington or on the East Coast? No, uh, it's a global organization of tourist guide associations all over the world. There are okay. about 110 countries and over 100,000 tourist guides around the world, okay? And we have an area representing uh, representatives of different I, I regions of the world, yeah. like Africa, Asia, uh, North America, we have Europe, we have the Middle East, we have all of those regions around the world. And we reach out to one another. If we know that there's a, you know, we need help from one another, we reach out. We have a good network of guides around the world. And I am the brand ambassador, the global brand ambassador uh, of goodwill of the World Federation. And that's how I got connected. And with that, I was able to, you know, have a team in Washington to be able to help her out bring her food, uh, give her some tours, bring her out, visit her, because many of us are confined at home, but others are very open and want to go out. So they have been trying to, to be gracious and hospitable, just like true ambassadors. Of no, no, to put this all together, just to, you haven't been paid by anyone. This is not a commercial project because tour guides, of course, are important. It's your business, right? You want, you're a tour guide because it's your business. And you don't have That's any right. business. And no, we do not get paid. Not only don't you have any business, you're not spending your own money and your own time to help someone. So that really shows dedication by all, all of you um, to, to do that. And um, it, is, is your organization based in the U.S. or where, where you're, where's the organization? It, the, 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 the head, the, our president is based in South Africa. Okay. Her name is Alushpa Ritchie. And we have a board, an executive board, made out of five countries. Iran, USA, we have from the Philippines, we have from Scotland, and then our leader from South Africa. And uh, we were able to give her a gift basket to show again our our love and our kindness. I don't think I don't think the gift basket ever was delivered. Yes, oh, thought, uh, David I delivered it. Yeah. When yes. did you deliver it? Same thing with the bags. Oh, with the other food. Yeah, with the other. David, food. David delivered the gift basket from the World Federation, and um, we captured that. So everything worked very well. And, and really, if, if you look at it, you, you mentioned the number of countries that are involved, including Iran and South Africa. It is yes. really a Jorgensen? mission. Yes. Jorgensen, um, this is the list of about 10 guides. Okay. There were 10 guides uh, from the DC Guild of Professional Tour Guides. When I reached out to them, um, sent in donations. We raised several hundred dollars for Francoise to pay for her rent and groceries. And another uh, four guides, like David, took her out for sightseeing. Some ordered a meal for her. One guide, um, Hayden Wetzel, had a friend from Cameroon. And so on Friday, they picked up Francoise and took her to Hayden's house for a lovely brunch. Wow. So um, I really, really want to thank those guides who, in this period of such uncertainty, found the kindness and charity in their heart to send money to somebody that they'd never met before who was really in a horrible, horrible situation. And I, I just appreciate what they did so, so much. No, I think we, we all do. Maybe if you can share the list, if you have it, you can email. We'd be happy to mention everyone. Because I think if I ever come to Washington or South Africa or Iran or wherever you guys are, um, I, I know uh, what type of tour guides I want to hire, you know, so. <laughs> the, yes, the, definitely. We're here. And, and now when, when you work, when times are normal, besides Corona, um, are you working <laughs> with, with uh, tour operators and travel agencies yes. together or people? How, how would people find you if they want yes. you to, to show them around in Washington and in New York? Sure. How would they contact any of you? We're all independent contractors. We all have our own businesses. We work as freelancers, so we are the gig 
the gig uh, independent contractors okay and and now that we have no job you know <laughs> you know we we're hoping that this uh, corona will will uh, leave us and and we go into a different reality altogether where groups will not come in big buses maybe they will come in small groups of less than 10 we don't know yet what will be the uh, cdc guidelines for tour groups that everything will be changing but no, they no. find us through the internet through the web through word of mouth through advertising websites no no what is what is your website is there a website for your organization people yes it's uh, wftga.org f uh, can you spell this f w uh -huh. f like uh france uh-huh t like tourist mm -hmm. g like guide and a like association dot org, dot org. yes okay it's f uh, wftga.org so we're going to put this also in here and um, hopefully um, you guys should join efforts with rebuilding.travel and initially we are also part of the african tourism board is part of um, in africa it's called project hope uh, where the world is working together to face the new reality and work for a better new reality and um, it, it looks like specifically tour guides with smaller groups and less people traveling. Uh, there is a good future for tour guides like you. And I think people will understand the value of your organization and your members to help out um, and really be part of forming such a new uh, reality we are facing, unfortunately, really after COVID-19 is, is gone. And, um, I cannot, uh, I, I said I'm really impressed with, okay. with any one of you taking this initiative. We have something similar here in Hawaii, it's called the Aloha Society, um, and they also take care of tourists that have a problem, but they, they get government funding and they get donations. You guys doing this out of the goodness of your heart That's and right. uh, personal, uh, what is what is you know even more is? than the yeah. Aloha uh, we, the, you know, know, you can put these straps great, around your shoulders and wear it like a backpack. And we really need the this in the world. I think we need people like you who also get appreciated uh, um, with, with funding and uh, uh, with options specifically through these times. There is really a need for tour guides and if tourism is keeping alive with this about the you don't have any liquid the tour operator but it's very much also about the tour guide um, and those so people that are behind four them. ounces we'll have to see it's four well, ounces it looks like uh, the four is ready three, to uh, get, oh, get sure. it you're in line you're checking in now for your airlines and uh it's um it's um hopefully um you have a great uh, trip, Francois, and, and you uh, you get home. Is your family awaiting you? Your family will be at the airport in Yaounde when you land? Yes, but we, they will not touch me. They will not have contact with me at the airport, unfortunately. Well, that's, that's, that's a good thing. Because they will see me, they will see me in distance. Yes, yes. Social distance. Can you give them the gifts? <laughs> no. I don't. I don't know if the authority will allow me to to give them the gift. We have T-shirts for the kids, and wow. and um, a baseball cap from the U.S. Capitol for her grandson. And her grandson's been asking for bubbles, <laughs> so we have bubbles for him. Wow! And lots of chocolate. Wow, that's that's amazing. Well, it was really, uh, it's really, um, I'd say it's quite a, an extraordinary story. We have followed Francois now in traveling between three continents and to finally get home. And uh, yeah, we're almost yeah. guilty that uh, we continue, had to continue to good job. at the beginning. And it did uh, I think uh, we will have a lot to do after COVID. Yes. I yes. don't know how we will recover of it. I'm going back home. I will see how it looks tourism looks like and we will see in about three months we have three months to see after COVID. Yeah and we all have to work together and it shows really right now tourism is a business of friendship it has no borders you can be from Iran you can be from the United States you can be from Pakistan you can be from South Africa we're all in this together 
-hmm. and it, it's a one that's why tourism is such a wonderful business it's a person business unfortunately right now we have to make it a zoom business a little bit more but it's really a personal uh, business for people to experience the world and i'm sure we we will get back to this maybe in a slightly different form but uh, tourism will never die it is um it's, yeah, yeah, it's right. Human right after uh, well francoise has a very strong faith and so that has helped her a lot through this situation and i know when i first saw the interview what kept running through my mind is jesus said when you were hungry you fed me and when i was in prison you came to visit me and i thought of her in that hotel room and it was as if it was her prison and those words would not leave my mind i had i had to help i had to help so true and um yeah it, it takes people like you to and and all of you uh, to really make this a wonderful business and it's rewarding you know to be part of this um, business and and let's uh, work all together and and see how we can get to the next step we all don't know no one knows um but we're going to get there and um but first of all francois you have a great flight i'm really happy you you're going home finally i'm sure we will be in touch also with african tourism board and work together on that part and um I invite I invite tourism guides to Cameroon and each tourist each guide will have as a gift a village an African village and that will make I'm getting a village I'm going to be a godmother of a village Yes and I'll be a godfather <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's 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 wonderful. Thank you very much, and thank you, Matteo. I know we have been in touch from the very beginning, right after Frankfurt. All three of you are really, um, all four of you, including Francois, you're you're absolutely fantastic. And uh, thanks to Washington, thanks to Newark, and uh, please stay in touch. And maybe we do another section after you uh, get settled in. Cameroon, because today it doesn't make any difference where you are on a Zoom meeting, so at least we can all meet again virtually. Yes. Good. Aloha from Hawaii, and um, thank you so much, guys, and, and have a great trip. Aloha. Clara, David, Mistral, who have helped, and the World Federation. Merci, who have merci. Thank you. Bye, Francois. Merci, Marika. A bientôt. A bientôt. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks, David and Clara. <laughs>